Welcome back, everybody. In this video, I'm going to give you the top five priorities you should have in any chess opening. I'm also going to list them in order from most important to least important. So if you're ever stuck, you don't know what move to play in the opening, you can look to these priorities and figure out what is most important in that position. Let's jump into it. Now, first and foremost, theory is king. If you've studied the theory and you know the exact move, that's the one you're going to want to play. There's no doubt about that. But this hierarchy of priorities is going to be very useful for situations where you don't know the exact move to play. Instead, what you can do is you can look at this hierarchy from top to bottom, most important to least important, and you can check off the box to figure out which priority you should be aiming for in any position. The first priority, the most important thing you should focus on in the opening is king safety. Simply put, you lose your king, you lose the game. So you have to protect it in the vast majority of situations. That means castling, getting your king out of the center and off to the side where it's a little bit safer and it's farther away from all of your opponent's pieces. As a quick example position, let's look at the queen's gambit declined. We've got the black pieces. So we play e6 here. After knight c3, we go knight f6, bishop g5, bishop e7. And now after knight f3, you can see by move five, we have already castled. We've taken the king out of the center where it's generally in its most vulnerable position, and we've tucked it off to the side. It's surrounded by pieces. It's very safe. But not every position calls for castling. In the vast majority of situations, that is the safest way that you can protect your king. You castle, you tuck it to the side. But sometimes, infrequently, but sometimes, the king is actually safest in the center. If you're being attacked on either of the flanks, you want to keep your king in the center instead of castling towards that attack. You're actually helping out your opponent there. So let's look at a quick example position of that. So for this position, we're going to look at the London system. So we got the white pieces here, d4, d5, bishop f4, now knight f6, say we go e3, now g6, and we play knight c3. Now after black plays bishop g7, a very common line here is to play h4. We're already trying to push this h pawn on the king side. We're already trying to start an attack on the king side. Now black can castle here, and it's not a mistake but it does walk into our attack and you can actually see there is a really fun line here after h5 if you play as black here you're gonna think well can't i just capture this pawn isn't this just a free pawn but now we play rook takes h5 after you recapture we take with the queen we're down two points of material here we are but we have an amazing initiative we're gonna play something like bishop d3 that creates a checkmate threat we can also bring the knight out to f3 and then potentially to g5 adding more pressure to the king side. We're also going to castle queen side and we're going to slide the rook over and absolutely control this h file. There's a really, really fun attack here. So personally, if I were black here, I would not castle. Instead, I would say, you know what? My king is much safer in the center right now. I would look for other priorities. I would say king safety. We're actually, we've already checked that box. We don't want to castle. That actually makes our king less safe. Instead, let's move down to the second priority. Let's see if we can find a move in that category that's useful for us. Our king is safest where it is right now, so we don't need to worry about that. So king safety, of course, is the top priority. Have to keep your king safe. But remember that it does not always mean you should castle. The vast majority of situations, yes, but sometimes the king is safest where it is. So let's start to look at the second priority now. The second priority for any chess opening is development. Development means getting your pieces off the back rank here where they start out at the beginning of the game and getting them towards the center, putting them in the center so they can control a lot of squares and they're actually activated. If you control the center of the board, you're going to control the game. So everybody knows what development is, but there is this fantastic idea called the 10 golden moves. These are the 10 ideal moves that you would make at the beginning of the game if your opponent couldn't make any of them. So First, you would go e4, you'd go d4, you'd want to control the center with these pawns. Notice that pawn moves are actually not considered development. When we're talking about development, we really mean pieces, but notice that pawn moves are actually essential for development because without those pawn moves, you wouldn't be able to move your pieces. These bishops would never be able to move if pawns in front of them didn't move. So e4, d4, we want to control the center. We want to bring our knights out to the center as well at f3 and c3, ideally. The bishops ideally would go to c4 and f4. Notice that we have great control of the center here. Both of these pawns are defended, and also we have great control of d5 and e5, so we're already grabbing some space on our opponent's territory as well. So after this, we ideally would want to castle. Then we're going to play something like maybe queen e2 or queen d2, so we can connect the rooks, and then we'll bring the rooks to the center. These are the 10 ideal moves that we would make if our opponent couldn't make any. This is where we would want our pieces to be 
this is considered good development because we're controlling the center. We have all of our pieces unified so that we can control the center of the board and we can control the game. So piece development is our second biggest priority. Very, very important. A little bit less important than king safety. But when we look back at this queen's gambit decline position, you'll notice that our first move is d5. Then we play e6. Then we play knight f6. King safety is our top priority. But notice that to get our king to safety, to get our king castled where we generally want it, we have to go through the steps of development. That's why development is such an important thing. Not only are we getting our pieces towards the center and controlling the center, both very important, but development also is in service of king safety. If we don't move this knight from g8, if we don't move this bishop from f8, we will not be able to castle king side. We will not be able to get our king to safety where it generally wants to be. So piece development, super important. King safety, a little bit more important, but notice that they're connected. The third priority for any chess opening is tempo. Now, tempo is the Italian word for time, and essentially time is the number of moves that you've made on the board. Now, when we're talking about tempo, we're usually talking about losing a tempo. Now, you can force your opponent to lose time if you make a developing move, a move that improves your position, and you force your opponent to react in a way that is unfavorable. So usually that means your opponent has to move a piece for a second time that they have already developed in the opening. In this way, you're gonna gain time. So as a quick example, we can go d4, d5, after c4, almost everybody and their mother plays e6 because they're playing the queen's gambit. But infrequently, you might see this move knight f6. Now, this is not a great move because after we capture and the knight recaptures, we can play e4, we can make a full move, a full developing move. Now, a pawn move is not actually development, but it's in service of development. We can force our opponent to move the knight away. They have to waste time moving a piece that they have already moved in the opening. So this is going to be very favorable for us. Instead, if the queen recaptures, then we can go knight c3. Again, we're making a developing move and we're forcing our opponent to, for a second time, move a piece that they've already moved in the opening. So we have won time. Time is a strange concept in chess that a lot of beginners and intermediate players don't really think about. But in the opening, it is so important because if you lose time, it's as if you gave your opponent an extra move. Can you imagine the kind of advantage that would be if your opponent in the opening said, you know what, I'm just going to pass. You can play another move. That would be incredible. So on both sides of the coin, you need to look for instances where you can gain time, but also on the other hand, you need to protect your own time. So avoid situations where you're going to lose time. You're going to lose a turn, right? So instead of playing knight f6, you want to play e6 so that you can recapture with the pawn and your opponent cannot gain a tempo on you, can't gain time. The fourth most important priority for any opening is space. Now, space is simply how much of the board you control. If you control more of the board, that's going to be beneficial because that gives you more space for your pieces to maneuver, get to their best squares, and it also helps out with attacking. So space is a very important concept, but not the most important. So here's a quick example game that I played. So I played d4, knight f6, bishop f4. I guess I played the London a lot. After g6, I went knight c3, preparing to play e4, which I play now. Now my opponent plays d6. I go queen d2, preparing to castle queen side. We both castle. So now in this position, my opponent went knight b to d7. And here with the white pieces, we're pretty well developed. We've got our king safe. So king safety, we don't need to worry about. So next priority is development. So you might say knight f3, right? That's a good developing move. And that's a perfectly fine move. But in this position, the best move is to play e5. And this is what I played in the game. e5 is a fantastic move because not only does it gain space, right? We're now controlling more of the board. We've pushed a pawn forward, but it also wins a tempo. This forces the knight on f6 to move to an unfavorable position. This is a piece that's already moved once before. So my opponent had to play knight e8 here. You'll start to notice that a lot of these priorities are intertwined. For example, king safety is connected with development because you got to develop before you can castle your king. And when you castle your king, you're activating your rook a little bit. Development is also connected with time because when you win a tempo, you're usually doing it through some kind of developing move. And in this position here, we're worried about space. We play e5, we're gaining space, but we're also winning a tempo. So if you wanted to just play knight f3 here, you say development's second biggest priority, I should play knight f3, that's perfectly fine. But when you find moves that are dual purpose like this, this is a move that not only gains space, but it also gains time. 
those moves are going to be so fundamental, so key, and very, very strong. So look for those moves where you can check off multiple priorities at the same time. Now let's jump into the final priority. The fifth and final priority for any opening is pawn structure. Now this is something that people usually overhype in the opening. They want to avoid double pawns like the plague. I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy, but pawn structure is, in my opinion, the least important of these five really should not be placing it higher than any of the other four that I've mentioned because it's really just not as important as people seem to claim it is. Double pawns are not the end of the world. It's much more important to gain space, win time, develop, or castle. So let's look at a quick example here. Here we play e4. This is a good move because we're aiding our development, right? We've made a pawn move. We're controlling the center. We've prepared to develop these pieces, but we're also gaining space. Now we play knight f3. This is again dual purpose because we're developing the knight. We're also one step closer to castling. After knight c6, we play knight c3. Again, a good move because we're developing and we're controlling the center. And now after knight f6, good moves here would be d4. This strikes in the center, so we're gaining some space. We're also preparing development for this bishop because we open up the diagonal. Another good move would be bishop c4. We would be developing and we're controlling the center with that and we're also one step closer to castling, but let's imagine we play d3, which is a fine move, but it's it's rather passive. Now after bishop b4, a lot of people here would just play bishop d2 on instinct, and that's a fine move, it develops, but what they're worried about is the bishop taking this knight, and we're gonna have to recapture with the pawn, and we're gonna have doubled pawns here. Instead, let's imagine we play bishop e2. Now bishop e2, in terms of the hierarchy of priorities, is slightly better, because like bishop d2, it's a developing move, but it also gets us one step closer to castling, so it also prioritizes king safety. And let's imagine that our opponent did capture the knight, the thing that we were afraid of. Recapturing with this pawn is not bad. This pawn structure is not bad. A lot of doubled pawns have pros and cons. So this one here is great because it's in the center, so we're controlling d4 a little bit more. Now this knight uh, for black will never be able to come here. And eventually, if we can protect e4, then we can push d4 ourselves. That will be supported by a pawn. So this doubled pawn on c3 is actually pretty useful because it helps us control the center. Additionally, we've now opened up the b file. So maybe we'll play rook b1. We can exert some pressure here. We also have the idea of maybe pushing uh, a4 and a5. This transformation of the pawn structure is really not an issue. And people very, very frequently prioritize pawn structure way too much over the things that they really should be prioritizing like king safety or development. There are much bigger priorities out there. As one final example, let's take a look at another position here. So black has just made the move bishop g4. Now, if we were just blindly following the hierarchy, we would run into a lot of issues. Instead, we need to concretely calculate. We need to evaluate the threats in our position so that we can utilize the hierarchy properly. But if we're just blindly following it, we might play something like knight c3. Now our opponent goes knight d4. This is an issue because there are two attackers on this knight on the next move. Black is going to capture it. We're going to be forced to recapture with the pawn. And this does ruin our pawn structure a little bit. But more importantly, it really exposes our king. And king safety has been very, very greatly compromised. So you still need to concretely calculate. You need to evaluate the threats so that you can utilize this hierarchy properly. Once you see that knight d4 is a threat in this position, you'll know that, okay, maybe I should play c3. This is a move that is actually in service of king safety because knight d4 is a big threat to king safety. Or maybe you would play knight b to d2. This is a developing move and it protects the knight. So after knight d4, we can play c3, we can kick the knight away. So you have to still take stock of the position. You have to evaluate your opponent's threats so that you can use this hierarchy appropriately. It really should just be used as a guideline of the most important things in the opening and give you a little bit of extra insight into what you want to play when you don't know exactly the next move. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. As a quick recap, the top five priorities in order are king safety, peace development, time, space, and pawn structure. Of course, as I've mentioned, theory is still king, calculation is still necessary, 
but I think this hierarchy is going to be very useful in giving you a good sense of what you should generally prioritize in the opening and also help you find moves when you just don't know what to play next.